So last time we talked about uh, more circle. Uh, basically, for a point, we do stress analysis, right? When you change the current system or when you look at the different directions, all the stress component going to change. Uh, but the stress is still that point, the stress. Uh, so we find out uh, when, you, when you change the angle, it's actually uh, follow a rule that we call more circle. So the point of when you change the direction, all the stress component point should be on this circle. So uh, this is actually pretty busy slide, busy drawing, right, by itself. You can see there are so many things there. So actually, if you try to read the book, that's what you see there. So it's hard to follow. But if you just follow what we join the process, then that's much easier. So I think for this, you actually need to look at the video rather than just look at the pictures. Uh, actually, if I go back one slide, you see, that's what end up. It's all messy. You cannot tell what's there. So I'll try to edit it a little bit before I post it this time, all right? Um, but anyway, my point is, if you just read the... Your, your sense of yeah, the video is recording. But I can, for the note, I can post the note after I edit it a little bit. So some of you just read the note from the lectures. Mm -hmm. It's not started? It's, uh, it's now, yeah, it's recording. Yeah, I think it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Oh. Okay, so um, in general, that's a more circle. So what we're going to do today is uh, because we already talked about how to draw the Mohr circle. So today is basically practice. We're going to go over uh, at least two, three examples of different situation, how to draw the Mohr circle, how to determine the principal stress, the principal direction, the maximum shear stress from the Mohr circle. Right. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. So for that, actually, I generate three uh, MD slides so we can actually go over examples. All right. So let's start with one uh, simple situation. Okay. So we know in a bar, if you have a bar here, you apply a load P here, right? Now if you look at the one point in the bar, what kind of stress condition you have? If you look at the one point in a bar that under x rotation, what kind of stress condition? If I cut this element out, so this is the x direction, right? So this will be the x direction. This will be the y direction. What kind of stress do you have in this element? You have a normal stress, right? So you have sigma here. And then, of course, sigma here. It's a pair. You stretch it. Any other component? If you cut the element out from here. Do you have any other component of the stress on this element? When you cut the perpendicular cross section, is there any shear? No shear, right? So therefore, for this element, align in the x, y direction, you won't have any shear, no shear. So just this normal stress, sigma. OK, let's say we give a sigma value. OK, what's the sigma value you want to give? Sigma equals to 10 Newton. OK, 10, not Newton. What's the unit? So basically, Pascal. Newton meter square, that's Pascal. Or it can be kilopascal, megapascal. Right? OK, for sigma equals 10, all right, for this point, now what's the Mohr circle? Then we want to use the Mohr circle to find out at this point what's the possible first principal stress, maximum normal stress. What's the second principal stress, the minimal normal stress? And also, what's the possible maximum shear stress? at this point, when you look at the different directions, right? We know if you look at the direction on you know, any arbitrary angle, theta, there will be shear. We already talked about that, right? On inclined surface, you're going to have shear. OK, so first, how can we draw the more circle for this point, the stress at this point? You set up the coordinate, OK? So the coordinate will be, oh, let me just draw it here. So you have the coordinate, 
That will be the sigma, and that will be the shear. That's the coordinate system. Okay, now, more circle. How do you draw it? What's the sigma x? What's sigma y? What's tau x y? Okay, this element, tau x y equals what? Equals zero. There's no shear. Okay, what's the sigma y? Zero. In the y direction, there's no stress, so zero. Right? And we know sigma equals 10. So the, what does that mean? That means sigma x equals 10. Right? Okay, now can we draw the more circle for this stress condition or stress state? Yes, we can draw this. All right, which way you want to use? Point A, point B, right? Because we already know this. Okay, where's point A? Point A, supposed to be sigma x, tau x, y. That's where point A. So in other words, it will be 10, 0. Okay, where's 10, 0? Okay, so here's 10, 0. This is the point. Right? So that's point A. Now, where's point B? B is supposed to be sigma y and negative tau x, y. Okay, where's this point? Orange. So it's right here. Point B here. Now, where's the circle? Can we draw the circle? Yeah, this will be AB is a diameter, so we draw the circle. Right? This is supposed to put plus point uh, the origin, so this way. So that's a Mohr circle. Right? Now, from this Mohr circle, can we find out the information we need? What's the first principal stress, sigma 1? The first principal stress. That's the maximum stress, normal stress, right? What's the value? Ten. It's right here, so it's 10. So that's sigma x is sigma 1. It's actually the principal stress. OK, what's the sigma 2? There. Now, what's the tau maximum? What's the tau maximum? Zero or 10? Why is zero? OK, how do you find the tau maximum from your Mohr circle? The radius. OK, what's the radius of this circle? Five. So it's not 10, not zero. It's a five. All right, so that's five. OK, if you want to say how do you calculate, you can review the equation. It's actually, do you remember, equal to r. This is the r, right? So r is half sigma x minus sigma y squared, and then tau x y squared. Okay. So if you don't believe this five the answer, you plug in all the sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y there. What do you get? You can do this without calculator. It's 10 minus 0, then divide 2. So that's 5. Square. 5 squared plus 0 squared. That's 5. 25, right? Square root, 5. So you don't need a calculator here. All right, so that will equal 5. All right, so that conform what we read from the Moore circle is the same you get from the equation. OK, which one easier, quicker? Looks like the circle gave you quicker, right? Visually, you see, oh, this is radius, that's a shape. And that is actually here, this point, right? So this point, let's call this one point D, OK? That's the maximum shear. Now, where is this D direction? D, you're supposed to go from this O, A, this point O, right? Actually, we should not call it, this is the O, so we we'll call this C. OK, so from the C direction, you turn 90 degrees down, you find the direction of the maximum shear on the more circle, more plane. Now, physically, this is the element here. OK, how much angle you should rotate on your physical plane? 45 degrees. Because this one, the rotation angle here is twice, always two theta. 
And two theta is 90, so theta is 45. So we know you should go 45 degree. That's the maximum shape. Right? Does that confirm what we learned earlier? 45 degree. Right? So I would say in chapter 2, 45 degree. See here, it's conform. It's consistent. All right? OK, any questions? Yeah. For the maximum stress, it's always where this intersection between the sigma axis and the circle. Because the circle, we know the center of the circle always on this axis, sigma axis. Center, I thought it just had to go through the circle. So it's actually going to go through the center. Yes, that uh, sigma axis must pass the center. Because we said last time, C, where is the C? Will be half sigma x plus sigma y, and then 0. See? 0. Therefore, center always on the sigma axis. OK. OK, here is another quick note. That's the part we often make mistakes. I see lots of mistakes here from the exams. OK, so here is a reminder. Here, we have sigma x plus sigma y. So this is a plus. So your average is this too. Give you the center. So that's why plus each other. Now here, it's a minus. That's the difference, distance. That gives you the radius. Does that make sense? OK, if that makes sense, remember those two are different. I often say people in a hurry calculate the wrong way. They put a plus sign here, put a minus sign there. Or put both as a plus sign. And that's the part often say mistakes. So you need to just pay attention to it, avoid that small mistake. All right. OK, any other questions or uh, comments? Yeah. Yeah, not from the original more circle equation. That equation was, remember, we had the equation x minus a squared plus y squared equals r squared. So here, y minus nothing. So that's why the center is located at c0. Yeah. Uh, what's the equation of? I'm not sure I understand which equation you're asking about. Yeah, so the equation was like this. So that, therefore, this is a circle, right? Where is the center of this circle? It's at the A0, right? So that's, this is the A, this is the 0. Because this circle must be at past that center. The center is at this point. That's why we say the center is y axis is 0. Because if it's not 0, then the equation won't be like this. You have to be y minus b. And now the b is 0. So therefore, the center must be on the axis, the sigma axis. All right. All right. Any other questions? OK, let's go look at another example from chapter 3. Remember when you have a shaft. Okay, you apply torque here. So if you look at the surface element here, what kind of stress state you have? Okay, let me cut this element out. What do you have on this element? Shear. Only shear. We call it pure shear, right? So therefore, if you twist this way, you're going to have a sigma. That's actually, sorry, a tau here, and then tau here, tau here, and then tau here. OK, let's say the tau equals 10. Because we want to go through an example, right? Give a number, easy to draw it. OK, now for this element, what's the Mohr circle? What's the sigma 1? What's the sigma 2? What's the tau maximum? Which is the principal direction? Sigma, uh, theta p. OK, let's draw the Mohr circle first. All right, so sigma tau. OK, now we need the point A, point B. 
All right, how do you find the point A? So let's first translate it. This one means sigma x equals what? For this element, what's the sigma x? Zero. What's the sigma y? Zero. What's the tau x y? 10 or negative 10? Negative 10. You remember the sign convention? That's good. All right? OK, for this, now can we draw the more circle? We can find out A. OK, where's A? That's be 0, negative 10. OK, where's B? 0, 10. OK, can we find out these two points? OK, 0 and negative 10. So that's what will be here. That's point A, right? It's right here. Now, where's point B? 0, negative 10. So it should be here. That's point B. Now, can you draw a circle with this? A and B. Oh, A negative 10. Thank you. Good catch. So this is the B. Okay. What? A is negative 10. So A is here. Right? A is negative 10, right? So A should be at the top because the axis is point downward. All right? You all agree on this? A point A, point B? All right, now can we draw a circle? With A, B as a diameter. So I can draw the circle here. Oh, this is a circle, right? Now I have a complete circle. Now can I read the, the information I need? What's the sigma one? Where's that point? It's here, right? So this is a sigma one. This is a sigma two. So what's the reading? Sigma 1 equals to 10. Sigma 2, negative 10. OK, now tau maximum. The radius. The radius is what? It's 10. It's not 5 this time. All right? So it's 10. OK, now last question. What's the theta p? Right? So here is the x direction, right? This is the x. Now, where is that theta p? That direction, that the normal stress is the maximum. It's actually the sigma 1, right? In that direction. OK, what's that point? OK, you do this way. First, where is that x axis? So this x, where is the x? So this is the one, right? This is the OX. This is the X direction, because point is A. A is the X axis, right? Now, where is the sigma one? It's here. This is the sigma one direction, right? So this is the direction of the theta P. Now, how much do you rotate from the X axis to the theta P direction? You rotate. Negative 90, right? So your 2 theta p equals to negative 90. Now, what's the theta p? Negative 45. You will say, no, 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 I don't think 2 theta p should be that. I should read 2 theta p should be equals to 70. Is that correct? Yeah, 2 theta p should be 270. You get to the, from that uh, x direction, you rotate 270, it gives you the signal. The sigma 1 direction. Now, what's theta p then? It's positive 135. OK, so you can say it's 135, or you can say it's negative 45. OK, which one? It's the same. So you can give me an answer, say it's negative 45. You can say, give me an answer, it's positive 135. It's the same thing. I'll count both correct. Yes. What's that? OK. Why is sigma 1 is 10? OK. Where is the sigma 1? Is this point, right? OK. This point, what's the value here? What's the coordinate here? The coordinate of this point, let's call this point D. The coordinate of this point is 10, 0. So that's why sigma 1 is 10. 
It's the corny of there. So for example, here, the corny here is a stress here in this direction. So, right? So this will give you the sigma value. This will give you the tau value for any direction, any theta. Yes? Okay, so on this Mohr circle, each point corresponding to a direction, right? When you rotate the direction, you get a new stress component. Okay, now where is this OX direction? It's the OA, right? So you go up, that's your original star point. Now, where's the sigma 1 direction? It's this direction, right? Okay, how far are they? 90 degree or 100, uh, 270, right? Let's say use a small number, it's negative 90. Okay, now they are 90 degree apart on the Moore circle. But here we say that it's always two theta. That's why back to physical plane, if you back to this, this we call physical plane, right? Or real world plane, is so what you see there. It's actually only rotate 45 degrees. Because whenever you rotate the angle of theta on this direct, so if you go a theta here, and then you must, this, on this join the more circle plane, you must rotate twice that angle. Yeah. So clockwise is like a negative direction? Yeah, we call the counterclockwise positive direction. So therefore, we say if you go counterclockwise, you say negative 45. Right? All right. If you go positive 90, actually you will be in this direction, sigma 2. So basically, if you go negative 45, you reach sigma 1. But if you go positive 45, you reach sigma 2. There are still principal direction, right? But if you read the book, we pretty much use the sigma 1 direction as the first principal angle. Or you can say it this way, theta p, the first one, equals to negative 45. And then the theta p of the second principal stress equals 45. So there are actually two answers. But you know, if you find the one, the other one is 90 degree apart. So if you can find the one, I'm sure you can find the second one. Right? Because they're 90 degree apart. Right? Okay, any questions? Oh, from the OA, because okay. A is your axis. See, on the physical plane, this is my x direction, right. and that's my starting point. If I define all the angle is to this actual direction, I define the angle positive or negative, right? So therefore, it's important you know where the point A is on your Mohr circle. That's where your angle start. Okay. You can always use that method. Yeah, that's why I say you draw use this two point method is better because you label A immediately and you need that to determine the angle. Alright. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because one go this way, go the other way. For mature it doesn't matter. They fail the same way. So we more are just asking for maximum value, we mean the absolute value, it doesn't matter. You know, basically here is a tau maximum value, here is a negative tau maximum value. The value is the R, so as long as you give me the R value, the absolute value, that will be. Yeah. For every scenario I'll run into, will I always get my tau axis as pointing downward? Now, is the tau they can give you point downward or upward? It's happened to in this situation here, it's point downward on the x axis. Because, because of this, see, because this is, if you look at this figure here, you are rotating it this way, so the shear must be this way. If you change your rotation, I mean the torque other way, you are changing the sign. Okay, so it's negative. Yeah, and our sign convention was look like this. So this is a positive, right? And this is a positive. So that's why this 10 should be negative 10. Right. So the more circle, it's traditional, though, it's the axis. Yeah, yeah, everyone use point downward. 
Start from more. Okay, now let's go over another example, a more general example. Okay, so remember last time, I think we went over an example like this. So you're going to have a sigma x equal to, I forgot the value, anyone got a notebook from last time? The example, I think it was one positive, one negative. Uh, anyone remember the right? Last time we had a one direction is compression, one direction was uh, tension. Okay, so that's actually one situation. Another possible situation are two direction, both are tension, right? Or it can be two direction, both compression, right? So we want to distinguish from last example. So I'm going to go over one example. We have tension on both sides. Let's see how the more circle look like. And what's the principle? Okay, so we need a sigma x value. Uh, anyone give a number? No, oh, I cannot do that. I need a calculator. Yeah. If you have a calculator, calcul help me calculate. Oh, we can do that. Give me a number. I think. What? Five ten. Okay, this will be five. Uh, sigma y. Ten. Okay, now tau, give a tau value. 15. Okay, are you are okay with this value? All right, so we just read them and came up, so I don't know what the more circle looks like yet. Let's do it together, all right? So we know sigma x, sigma y. So I think it's, if I show you this picture, it's better you write down what's sigma x, what's sigma y, and then talk to y. Okay, for example, this one, sigma x will be five. Sigma y will be, 10. Now, what's tau x, y? Positive 15 or negative 15? I still heard positive. Why is positive? It's negative. Because this is a positive surface. It's against the y direction. So that's a negative. Right? So tau is negative 15. You already told me last example, negative 10, right? So here, just change to negative 15. Yes. This this one we talk about the stress at this point. We don't know this come from a torque or a bending or from a force compression. It can be anything. So we just look at this point, the stress are you have under tension, both direction, and then there is a shear. Yeah, maybe if you have this part of the uh, shaft, then the torque will most likely you're going this way. Yeah, coming out. Yes, yeah, so positive. Thank you. All right. Okay, now can we draw this for uh, more circle? All right, so this will be sigma, and this will be the tau. Okay, more circle. Point A. Where is point A? Five and negative 15. Okay, so how about we draw it this way? So this is a five. So this is a five, this is a five, this is a five. So 10, 15, right? 10, 15. This is five, 10, 15. This is five, 10, 15, right? So every scale is a five. Okay, now can we pin down where the A is, where B is? A, okay, five, I go this way to the right. And then negative 15, up, so it's here. So this will be point A. All right. Okay, what, where is point B? Will be left to 10? No, right, go to the right. 10, right? 10 and 15, so we will be here. Right? Okay. Now I can draw the more circle. So connect A and B. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, I don't know how to erase it. So sorry, I just have to leave it on there. All right. So I guess this line won't show up in your notebook, right? <laughs> All right, so A and B. Now we can draw the circle. OK, so let's try it. Circle. All right, not uh, that good, not too bad. All right. OK, now we have the circle. Now where is sigma 1? It's right here, right? Sigma 2 is right here. Where is the tau maximum? This, this is the tau maximum, right? OK, now let's see if we can find all these values. What's sigma 1? OK. How do you proceed here to find all the values? You need to find the R first. R is a key parameter. If you get the R wrong, everything wrong. If you get R correct, most of R will be correct. So what's the R? Radius. Can we use this triangle to find the R? This triangle. Yes, OK. So the side. 15, right? So this side is 15. What's this side? 2.5. OK, now 2.5 and 15. What's the hypothesis? What's the side? So you, anyone got a calculator? So 15 square plus 2.5 square, and then square root. So the R equals to 15.2. All right, so 15.2. Now, what's sigma 1? Sigma 1, oh. sigma 1 we said, sigma 1 is this, this point. So that equal to C plus R, right? OK, where is C? 5 plus 10, average. 7.5, OK, so equal to 7.5 plus 15.2. And that is 22.7. All right, now what's sigma, what's the sigma 2? 7.5 minus 15.2. What's the value? Negative 7.5. 7, all right. OK, now, what's the maximum shear stress? 52.2, we already have it, right? OK, then what's the theta p? Principal direction. OK, start from the x, that's O8, or the C8, right? This point we call C. So C, that's the x. So this is the x direction here. Now you rotate this much negatively. It's a little bit over 90. You calculate that angle and then divide by 2. So most likely, maybe like a 95 divided by 2. Right? But we can calculate that angle. Yeah. Yeah, you can, yes, if you can read there, you proportional, you read it, that will be okay. Uh, yeah, close enough, you'll, you'll get the credit. All right? Or you can just calculate. All right? Any questions? Can you all do this one? If I give you a similar homework, you can all do it, or an exam problem. OK, let me ask you a question. What if I change this shear stress to this direction? If I change to, OK, 15 this way, 5 here, this 10 still here, what would the, the change from more circle? 
Okay, let's do it. I think let's see if I have a next page. Oh, I don't have a next page here. A and B will switch. Is that correct? I think no. It will just not just A B switch. Okay, let's uh, get a, add a space. Let me add a space. We can do it together. Okay, remember what we have this situation now is you have five here, 15 this way, and the 10 still here. Right? Okay, more circle. Let's draw it. Okay. Where is the A? Five. Five, 15. Where is point B? 10, negative 15. Okay, now let's find out where is the A and the B. Okay, so here's the 5, 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15. All right, I just draw a little bit smaller. This way it won't go up. Okay, where is the point A? 5, 15. So A is here. Now where is point B? 10, negative 15. So 10, negative 15. So it's here. See, it's not just A, B switch. It's actually it's just a flip. All right? OK, now A, B, that's the diameter. And this is the circle. OK. Now, where is the sigma 1? What's the sigma 1? What's the r? Let's get the key parameter r. What's the r value? Basically, you get this circle. Uh, this is triangle, right? This side is what? It's 15. This side is 2.5. So r value equal to 15.2. Say r don't change. Now, what's sigma 1? Center. Does center change? No. Center don't change. Right? Center is supposed to be half sigma x plus sigma y. And that, no change there. So center still be 7.5. Then plus r. So that still be 25.7. That's 22.7. The same. So sigma 1 won't change. Sigma 2 won't change the same. Tau maximum, the same. OK, now see the P. Now, where are your axis? Axis. Oh, this is the CA, right? So your CA is here. This is the X. Now you go this much, you get to the First principle. So your angle become a positive angle. That's the part. Right? The value the same. Basically you go from point A, rotate to the sigma one. That's the sig that's the two theta P. Yes, in this case positive. And in the previous case, it was negative. Now you have a positive. That's what changed. Right. OK, any questions about more circle? You all need more in-class examples, or you can handle the more circle now? <laughs> all right, try the homework first. I'm <laughs> <laughs>